Welcome back to Marquee Backstage. I'm your host, Julie Milam. Our guest today has been a world traveler, but he's made his way back to his native Kentucky. Along the way, he's fought many battles, both emotional and physical. Despite all of it, he is here with us today, and he's ready to tear down those walls. This is Justin Flynn. Six months should have been long enough for you to make up your mind, decide on my love. You just couldn't let go of what you had before. I'm about to shout away from being passed out on my floor. Sometimes I wonder if you ever really care. Justin, allow me to be one of the first to welcome you back to Kentucky. Thank you. How does it feel to be back in your home state? Bittersweet. Oh, why? Bittersweet. Well, I loved being down in Texas, and circumstances kind of led to me coming back home. So it's a bittersweet to be home. I grew up here, and I'm excited to be back home. So tell me about young Justin Flynn. Young Justin, uh, good kid, quiet kid, sheltered kid. Uh, loved music. My grandma got me a guitar when I was eight. I broke the first one. Oh no. Uh, my brother and I were like all Jeff Hardy fans and into wrestling, so we broke one guitar. Uh, turned 12, she got me another one, and uh, I still have it. And just fell in love with playing music. So did you perform for your family? So it started really on grandma's front porch, um, and it's like concrete walls, like a little, uh, like a horseshoe. And so the acoustics in it were awesome. And she wanted me to learn how to play Hotel California. Okay. So I started trying to figure that out and it took forever. But you wanted to do it to impress her? I wanted to do her. it because I loved music, mm -hmm. but also because I knew my grandmother loved music. And so to impress her and then also to just make her smile. Mm -hmm. So what was the first public performance you can remember? First public performance, probably church. Okay. I grew up in church and uh, choir, and so I kind of got a little bit of idea how to sing there. Um, of course, young going through puberty, you don't know if you're a baritone or a tenor or right. what you are. So, um, but I had a few solos, and then Josh Turner's Long Black Train came out, wow. and that was big um, to play in churches and stuff too. So, the first non hymnal. Mm -hmm. uh, type music I played was the first song was uh, Josh Turner's Long Black Train and I performed that in front of the 60 people that we had at our church. So Were you nervous? I was a little nervous but I'd also been in the choir mm -hmm. for a few years growing up so I wasn't as nervous as I thought but being the only voice that was coming out right. was a little nerve-wracking right. for sure. All eyes on you. Yeah. You're not blending in with the crowd. Kind of like right now. Yeah. <laughs> All eyes are on you for <laughs> yes. sure. So did that start your desire to be out in front? I think that, I don't know if it was a desire. It's almost an addiction. Because mm -hmm. that people get excited about, I don't know, being nervous and all that, that just kind of running through you. And I got, I love it. I just love it, love it, love it. And I'm always nervous, even now, every time I play. Mm -hmm. Uh, until about three or four songs in, you kind of set in and you get comfortable. Yeah, you get lost in it. Yeah. But that's the beauty of music. Exactly. But I think everybody gets lost in it. Exactly. So when did you start branching out into your own style of music? So, I would say probably about three years ago. Three and a half, four years ago, maybe. Um, COVID hit. Everybody knows about that. And we're all tired of talking about it. But... Um, as much bad as it was, it was also good for a lot of people. And so for me, I wanted to do something positive with it. And I did a lot of soul searching and a lot of uh, kind of isolation, because we were all isolated, mm -hmm. and uh, really kind of found myself, uh, my heart, my mind, but also music too. So it all just kind of played together and started blending together. And then I just started writing things about what had happened to me.
You've been texting, calling for weeks After all the hell you put me through I know that talk's cheap Honey, there's no way I'll ever change my mind Without this talk, you might as well give up Quit wasting both our time Cause I won't make same mistakes I always gave all you did was take Yeah, you had my heart Gave it back a little scar from your heart But I promise it all One more shot I won't make Same mistakes If you just think about the hell you've caused It shouldn't be hard for you to take A toast from me to you, baby Just don't make the same mistake I won't make Saying mistakes, always gave all you did was take. You had my heart, gave it back a little scar from your heartache. But I polish it all, one more shot don't make same mistake. Justin, do you have any brothers and sisters? I've got four younger brothers. Four younger brothers? Four of them. Wow, that's a lot of testosterone in one house. Well, I grew up with two of them, and then two of them, because my mom and dad divorced. Uh, my dad remarried, he had two more sons. So was it so, like having four brothers looking up to you? Or did they? I, I, well, I don't know if they looked <laughs> up to me or not. They probably learned a lot of what not to do in <laughs> life. So I know uh, I've got a 24-year-old brother that was the youngest in the house growing up. And he's f smart beyond his years. I think he's got a lot of experience watching <laughs> <laughs> myself and uh, 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 the middle one. Uh, but uh, and I don't know if I can say their names or not. Or you can. Shit. You can All say right. whatever you want. Well, Brandon and Eli. And uh, so he watched us growing up, and and uh, I think he learned a lot from us. And we didn't have anybody to learn from, so we were just kind of out on our own. <laughs> Winging it. Just running, you know, <laughs> tripping and falling and trying to get Living ourselves life. back together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, try to set, you try to set the example. Sometimes you set a good example. <laughs> Sometimes you set a bad example. But you're always setting examples. That's right. So, man, not just to your younger brothers, but to other people that are around you. Um, your friends, you're an influence. Um, and then to the younger generation that's watching you grow up so I've been able to we've always been close so we've always had a lot of conversations about what it used to be like what it's like now what we think it's going to be like why it didn't yeah. turn out the way we, we <laughs> thought it was going to work yeah so tell us about leaving Kentucky uh, to go down to Texas mm -hmm. uh, leaving Kentucky was uh, uh, it was a bittersweet too because I grew up here and all my family's here and uh, of course, you know, they don't want you to leave, but right. I think it's good to kind of branch off and fly the coop once mm -hmm. in a while. So going to Texas was exciting. Um, I packed up a 95 GMC Jimmy with a U-Haul trailer and like half of my belongings and uh, just went for it. Got down there and went around to bars, and asked for places to play and got a shot and just kind of grew from there. So I was successful down in Texas. Why Texas? 
Uh, woman. Uh? Woman got uh -huh. together. <laughs> Tell us about that. I think we all are kind of follow women, you know. That's the goal, right? Man and women mm -hmm. get together and do your thing. But uh, she was just different. She didn't really care about anything other than who I was, why I picked the songs I picked to sing. Um, and we connected on a level I never connected with somebody. So we spent uh, about a year and a half talking and getting to know each other, and then we met halfway a couple times. And because you don't want to move before you know anybody. That's right. That's I mean, it's dangerous. crazy, really, if you think about <laughs> it. But COVID did a lot of good for me too. So, yeah. and for her as well. And uh, she believed in me, and I believed in myself. Um, so that's all that really mattered at that point. Mm -hmm. I think that's all that really matters. For sure. At all. For sure. Is finding someone that believes in you that you can count on. And I think that helps you to believe in yourself. For sure. So it's great to have your family support you. Positive But it's different when it's someone that doesn't have to. Correct. Do you remember the moment when it all changed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Angela uh, was having some pain and stuff like that in her stomach. And it was kind of radiating to her back. And she thought maybe it was uh, uh, like pancreatitis or belly ache or something. But we went and got checked out got her checked out and uh, they found a small tumor on the head of her pancreas and they're like it's probably not anything to worry about you're 37 you're young you're healthy you're in good shape um, full of energy and so went through a couple months uh, well a month of basically trying to figure out what it was and the moment she got diagnosed was they told us three to six months um, At 37? 37 years old. Um, yeah, 37. What was it like when you got home that night? Like, how do you wrap your head around that? Well, we were in the hospital because she was having so much pain. They were trying to get her out of the pain and trying to figure out what was wrong, and they were running tests. And we spent about, from the time we found out, well, that visit, we were there for about a week and a half. Um, and it's just detrimental. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the last thing you ever expect to hear, especially in your 30s. Those are the hardest conversations to ever have. I mean, honestly, there just wasn't a lot of conversation. Really? You didn't know what to say? Not at first, didn't she didn't either. We didn't have to. We didn't have to say a whole lot. We just felt mm -hmm. what it was, so I just laid in the bed with her. Hard to make a house a home when you wake up in the morning all alone. The isolation's getting a little old. It's a little cold living in my own time zone. There's some cards I don't wanna play. Been crushed over heartbreak. Made some choices that were hard to make. Done a bunch of things I regret someday. Can't change my mind. If I won't listen to me, can't unlock this door. If I can't find my key, can't make you stay. If you wanna leave, and there's nobody that will, if I don't love me. sympathy cause you're pretty much dead to me no more begging pretty please cause I'm finally up off my knees I can finally breathe without you standing over me I'm cured from your disease so stay the hell away from me I can't change my mind I don't listen to me Can't unlock my door If I can't find my key Can't make you stay If you want to leave And there's nobody that will Did 
you call your parents? Uh-uh. No? No. Nope. Brothers? Nope. I didn't call nobody. She didn't either. Just the two of you? Just two of us. And that's how it was when I got there, but from that point for sure forward, it was just the two of us. So nobody was there for you? Um, kinda. Emotionally, yeah, to talk to. Um, but not the way I really wanted to get everything out. Mm -hmm. um, and I kinda, I really kinda just introverted um, and she did too. She wanted to do things because we knew she didn't have a lot of a lot of time left. And her, she has a seven-year-old son. That, his name is Max, and we just turned our focus on doing everything we could for him. And I turned my focus on everything I could do for them. And uh, I kept back playing music a lot. Um, the last little bit I didn't play at all, um, which is fine. You savored every moment with her. Yeah, I knew they were limited. So you just kind of dive in and make the best out of the situation you can. And you don't think about tomorrow. You think mm -hmm. about right now. Yeah. Well, you try to focus on the right now. Tomorrow's coming, and you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. And in that situation, it's just terrifying. And it's sad. It's helpless. It's absolute help. And helpless. I think it's human nature for us to want to control our environment or to have some piece of the control of your environment. And in that situation, you have zero control. Zero. That's a tough place to be in mm -hmm. and to be mentally positive. But you were that. I tried to be. For her. Um, yeah. And I her. would say about 90% of the time, positive. That might be one of your greatest successes yet. It could be. The legacy that you left there in their life. Honestly, from my heart, that's probably the biggest success I'll have from now until ever. I mean, I never know what life's gonna bring, but for now, it's... Huh, it's a tough feat. Is that your first big loss in life? Personal my first loss? big loss, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's definitely changed who you are at your mm -hmm. core. And that had to have made leaving Texas harder. It did make it Because harder. it was your final goodbye to her. Mm -hmm. Her and her son and family, mm -hmm. too. So definitely bittersweet. It makes sense now why you use that word to describe coming home bittersweet. here. Bittersweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry for your loss. That's all right. It's been, it's been a lot of, again, kind of self-reflecting, too, out of the situation. I mean, you know it's coming. Mm -hmm and there's no way to prepare for it. So you just do the best you can with what you got. Has that inspired you to write music? I think it's inspired me to rethink how I write music. The purpose? I've always written music, and actually when I got back, um, I was going through some stuff I had in storage, and I've had in storage for years, but I found this tote, and it had stuff that I'd written when I was like a teenager. Oh, music. Yeah about, you know, little crush. <laughs> everyday is, stuff. Little everyday stuff. <laughs> and I was like, man, I, I could actually kind of put things into a perspective and then the thought then, and then kind of compare, not really comparing, I guess. Well, I guess it is comparing. You're looking at what you do now versus what you used to do. Right. And it's more focused. Right. And it's better spoken and better written. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually starting to kind of look back at what I did do and kind of revamp some of that to get With what you know some now. new music. Yeah. That's incredible. That's what the beauty of music is. For sure. It's the language we all speak. It's mm -hmm. the way that you express yourself where you don't really feel like you have to hide anything because right. at the moment that you write it, it's just you and the paper. Mm -hmm. And expressing yourself, that's a big thing with music too, is kind of being open about who you are. I think so many people hide who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't tell the truth. And I've done that, we're all guilty of it. Mm -hmm. But writing music, writing poetry, writing a novel, you let some of that truth out and you get connected with who you are. But that's what helps people connect to you mm -hmm. because that's their truth also. Mm -hmm. And they may not have the courage to share it, yep. but they connect to you because you did. And then you get a connection from people. Do you ever write a song or are you inspired to write a song that you say, oh, this would be great for so-and-so? So for me, 
uh, the first song I wrote, Walls, um, I actually was uh, listening to this girl talking about how terrible her uh, breakup was and how she was never going to get anywhere and she was always going to be sad. And, you know, and I was like, golly, it's not that. I mean, it is, but it's not that bad. But the big thing is we put these walls up and we don't let nobody in the wall. Mm -hmm. And you can't get anywhere with yourself or with anyone else if you don't let that wall down. That is how we all come together. Mm -hmm. That's what brings it all full circle. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate your vulnerability For sure. to share who you are. So let's talk about where you want to go next. Okay. Wherever it How takes. big do you want to go? As far as it'll take me. <laughs> as big as I can get. Just to find happiness. And when it's found, gets put to the test. And then you realize. What you found ain't so nice So you try your luck One more time With a roll of a dice Very seldom you win On the jackpot of love I don't mean give up That you won't find the one Keep your nose on the ground Like that good old bloodhound Don't build your walls So damn tall That they can't be torn down I know right now Your heart's a little colder than ice Please don't give up Someday you'll know when it's right Don't hammer down the gym jacket crown Don't load up your mind 